Hi everyone, this is Neil Writer here, also known as The Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. What you're seeing on screen at the moment is all the earwax I removed from one patient's ears today. So it's both their ears. And we did so exclusively using uh, Jobson Horn, also known as the Ear Correct. And the reason for using an Ear Correct in this patient is because they do suffer from tinnitus. And in the past, the tinnitus has spiked post microsuction, only short term. But um, because I was able to remove this using an ear correct without the need and requirement of microsuction, we proceeded to do that. It's not always possible. Sometimes you can get wax really deep in the ear, on the eardrum, for example, and where it's just not accessible using a mechanical instrument like an ear correct, and you have to resort to microsuction. But obviously, we always explain the risk to the patient. Now, guys, um, I'm going to let you to watch this. It's been a very interesting day, uh, a lot going on, and I would strongly recommend you watch till the end of the video because you're going to see some. Uh, another statement from um, a person who actually works alongside ENT within the NHS who's had to perform emergency um, hearing tests on patients who have had experienced trauma after having earwax removal performed on the high street. Now, um, the high street chains that this patient mentioned to me um, are known to actively train their reception and clerical staff to perform earwax removal and sometimes with minimal training. So if you've been watching my video over the last uh, few weeks, I've been uploading various statements and um, whistleblowers comments uh, about some of the um, activities that go on surrounding ear care in the UK. Most namely, there's now training courses that actively train the lay person. When I say the word lay person, I mean the lay person in terms of ears. So if I was talking about uh, the nose or the throat, for example, well, I will classify, my, classify myself um, under those circumstances as a layperson. So I don't want anyone to use that, uh, misquote me when I use the term uh, layperson. So going back to my point, so there are um, courses in the UK that are training the layperson with no previous ear experience or qualifications, um, sometimes within, within a day or two, and some of the training is appalling. Some some of the delegates who have attended this course haven't even, they've had best part of 45 minutes practical experience according to these testimonies and they actually fail their clinic uh, their practical assessment was still passed some people didn't even get a chance to perform a practical because the patients didn't have earwax and they were still passed and these courses are accredited by a membership body now i'm openly going to um, mention them for the first time they are known uh, previously known as the british society of hearing aid audiologist but they recently changed their name to the British Society of Hearing and Audiology. And the acronym that they use is, is uh, B-Sharp, B-S-H-A-A. And I've got their email addresses at the bottom. The reason for that is that they recently um, published uh, a proposal uh, document called an oral care register. So B-Sharp want to um, invite these lay people, um, or make them eligible at least, to enrol as a member within b -sharp and also add them to this oral care register that they're proposing, where basically, essentially, you have a, a register of uh, accredited professionals, or in this case, lay people who have gone in their, their courses that they've accredited. Um, and it's for you guys, members of the public, to make reference to. So you can look onto this register, and as far as you're aware, these people are um, all extremely qualified and trained. So it's a disguise, really, to hide and uh, from what they're really doing, which is training their, uh, some of these high street chains are uh, training their clerical staff receptionists to perform their wax removal, as said. Um, now, they're using the term associate wax member, and I've been pushing the membership body for a couple of weeks now to clearly define what it means, because it is open. we all know what it means, but we want to hear it from the horse's mouth. And I can confirm today that they have said that um, any individual, an associate wax member, a further definition is any individual, so I'll rephrase that, any individual, who have successfully completed one of their B-Sharp accredited oral care courses, which you know from previous examples are very poor standard, some of these. Um, and I've given you some examples early on in this video as well. And we also know some of these B-Sharp accredited courses literally train anyone, and that within one or two days. So that's already been established. And they also have to meet a few other requirements, um, but they're all box-ticking exercises, really. The crux of it is... Um, when they're using the phrase any individual, so we know of beauticians, electricians, plumbers, tattooists, school teachers, and of course receptionists at high street hearing chains that 
uh, gone on these courses and now performing your action removal. And these are all accredited by a membership body. So um, I have decided, uh, I've given my notice uh, that I'm going to be terminating my membership with this professional body. I, I don't want to do so until I remove all of their logos and acronyms from my website and all my marketing. So I'm going to hopefully do that at the weekend. Um, I don't want to be part of them anymore. They are denying there's any conflict of interest, but um, I should advise. And, and I'll, I'll just go back to that. They're saying that they're trying to be altruistic and there's no uh, financial gain for them to be doing this. So first of all, they're going to get you're going to yield increased membership fees. And secondly, um, there's high street companies here in chains um, who stand from who stand to benefit from this. And ironically, um, a few of the board members of Bisha or council members are affiliated. So they, they work in their day jobs with these high street chains. So there's clearly a conflict of interest. They haven't disclosed that. And next week, Bisha have been invited to um, uh, a committee meeting. It's called the National DWAX Access Group. And I've been told by about this um, special meeting by all other relevant parties. So there's going to be other membership bodies attending this, the RNID, so the um, uh, Royal Nas National Institute for the Deaf, and uh, NHS England. So I've been told by three or four of these different parties who are attending what's going on behind the scenes. And Bishar have been invited, and in, in this correspondence, this Bishar group sent today, they are seeking wider representation onto this National DWAX Access Group meeting for next week. Little do they know that I'm fully aware of who Bisha are trying to get to attend this special meeting next week. And I can reveal, I won't mention the company's name, but it is a private um, training company who trains all these lay people and all the reception staff at the high streets in performing earwax removal. So Bisha themselves don't even clearly see the conflict of interest. They want to get on board on this meeting about this very controversial issue at the moment the actual company that is training these people i'll just let that sink in for a moment they don't know that i know i'm fully aware i've had two people tell me uh, who are going to be attending that meeting and they're trying to explain to be sure that's a clear conflict of interest this is just for the membership bodies nhs england and rnid it's not for private companies like myself because i also perform earwax removal training that is a clear conflict of interest but they actually want this company on there now guys it is a public con consultation so technically speaking anyone can uh, respond to this so there is their email address if you're not happy with what bishar are proposing which is essentially the accrediting of courses that train lay person with no previous ear experience or qualifications to perform earwax removal and then and sometimes within one or two days and this can include the receptionist at your local hearing center or a beautician, electrician, a tattooist. And there must be, they're all great at what they do. Don't get me wrong, guys. I wouldn't be able to do a, a tattoo person's job in two days. I would need years of experience. I wouldn't be able to cut hair in two days. I wouldn't be able to uh, be front of house at uh, uh, a hearing center within two days. These are all professional jobs. Uh, so it's nothing, I'm not taking, discrediting the profession in any way. But what I do is a very specialist job. It's taken, it's, I've got a degree in audiology and that has provided me all the necessary prerequisites to then learn um, how to perform earwax removal. So, um, so if you're not happy with Bishar's position on this and also that the fact they are wanting to allow them the opportunity to enroll as a member to their organised body and also be registered on this oral care register, please send them an email. Be kind. Don't be rude. Don't be aggressive. I please urge you. But I do also want people to email now. I did uh, mention last week that I would be requesting that. So now's the time. Um, please do. Uh, I'm still going to be fighting the, the good fight from the sidelines, but I don't want to affiliate myself with this membership group. And guys, this is an email, uh, a message that I received today. It's um, I alluded to it right at the beginning. It's uh, an audiologist who works with ENT and they've recently had to treat some uh, patients on an urgent case basis who have attended experiencing trauma after receiving earwax removal from the high street. And I can confirm the names of the high street hearing centres that were given to me are well known for um, training their reception staff. Now, guys, I want to keep this video under 10 minutes so I can upload on all platforms. But thank you for your support and please do email. But do be kind, um, please. Thank you. Bye.